Hi, okay, well, listeners. Let's learn sumo. I'm Clayton. Welcome to the podcast. So we're up to day 11 and 12 of the November Basho in Fukuoka. Uh, we've got a little bit to catch up on. We've got a couple, about three clear leaders at the moment with a couple of people chasing. Uh, but before we get to the top division, we'll just uh, catch up on a few things. So in Jurio on day 11, we had another Mizuiri, a water break. This is the first one they've had in Jurio in 24 years. It was between uh, Shimanumi and uh, Mitori. Now they got into a bit of a uh, uh, bit of a grapple for a little while. It took them uh, probably about two or three minutes. A very Greco-Roman sort of hand grapple position. They held for quite a while. Then they got into a uh, uh, one had a left grip, one had a right grip, and they just stayed in that position for a number of minutes before the uh, judges called the Mizu Iri, uh, laid the salt, checked the position, sent them off for some water, and brought them back and put them back into position. And off they went again and continued to hold that grip. Then about another two minutes later, uh, they got a little bit feisty and Mitoryu pushed Shimanumi out for an Oshidashi win. Uh, it all happened fairly quickly in the end. So a uh, little bit of uh, interesting trivia there. Uh, by the way, I mean, in Jurio, the second division, they do the positional restart where they stop, they salt mark their feet, check where their arms are, and they go off and have water and come back and start start in that same position. In the lower division, Sandanme, Makushita, and Jonidan, they actually do a full restart uh, if they do a Mizu Iri. Uh, not sure, I'll have to check when their last Mizu Iri was. Uh, Wakataka Kage, our former Sekiwake, he is uh, back in Mukushita. He got his Kachikoshi t- um, on day 11, so he got his winning record. They only do uh, limited fights in the lower divisions. I think they do seven fights out of the 15 days. So he uh, struggled a bit, got a couple of losses up, but uh, he's come back with his Kachikoshi. So let's get on to the top division in Makuchi on day 11. One of our leaders, Tami Fuji, well, he was up against Churunumi and his bulk just simply overpowered Churunumi. He went for an Oshidashi straight out. There was not much to that. Uh, our little pocket rocket from Shizuoka, uh, Midori Fuji. He was up against the big round belly Hiradumi, who's also having a pretty good tournament. Uh, he, well, Midori Fuji overpowered him. He got his favourite both arms under Hiradumi, and you could see the panic that Hiradumi had at that point when he realised that Midori Fuji got both his arms under. He wiggled as fast as possible, but he got eventually Oshidashid out by Midori Fuji, who gets his Kachikoshi. And during his interview, uh, Midori Fuji said he was very happy to get his Kachikoshi two uh, tournaments in a row. So uh, very happy about that. He also said that uh, Atami Fuji, one of his stable mates at Isagawa Stable, he doesn't want uh, Atami Fuji to beat him, but uh, seeing as how they're at the same stable, they'll only face each other if they make it to the playoff. Now, uh, bear in mind, at the end of uh, day 11, uh, Atami Fuji is nine wins. Midori is eight wins. So that's still possible, uh, given that uh, Midori is only one back. Uh, Hokusaiho faced Oho. They got locked up in arms. Uh, Oho got his arms a little bit locked up by Hokusaiho. And Oho tried to body shove Hokusaiho to the edge. But Hokusaiho, funnily enough, uh, got a pretty good Kotanage uh, uh, throw on Oho. And he went down first. Oho went down first. But I tell you what, it was pretty close. Uh, probably a little bit lucky on Hokusaiho's uh, side there, but he did get the winner. Uh, Takiyasu, the big bear, well, he got a really good left grip on Shonanumi very early after the tachi eye and just walked him out. Yori Kitty, uh, Ura, and Tobizaru, well, it's, it's an interesting match. Both of these guys I kind of think of as chaos agents. They're really fast movers. Uh, it's not a lot of gripping goes on. So they both at the touchy eye went in very low. Uh, Ura's been going extremely low at the touchy eye, almost at the just above waist height at his opponents this whole tournament. And uh, I think it's maybe a little bit too low. It's uh, Maybe it's stopping him being pushed back straight away, trying to keep his uh, centre of gravity as low as possible. Anyway, there was a lot of thrusting, a lot of arms, Sapari thrusting. Wasn't a lot of power to it between the pair of them. Uh, but as they got around, Ura retreated and basically got forced into a bit of a tumble at the bales, as Ura does, uh, giving Tobizaru another win. 
Uh, Diane Show was uh, up against our one of our leaders, Ichi Yamamoto. Um, Dayasho, our human threshing machine, started hit the windmills going against Ichi Yamamoto, but then he just withdrew at the last moment, grabbed an arm, and Ichi Yamamoto goes down. Hiki Yatoshi pull down. Uh, probably looked a little bit more like a Hitaki Komi, but apparently there was an arm grab in there to give the Hiki Yatoshi pull down, uh, giving Dayasho that win and dropping Ichi Yamamoto back uh, from the winner's group. Our Ozeki Takakesho and our uh, Sekiwake Koto no Waka met up. Two big men, uh, a good solid touchy eye, and uh, Takakesho goes into his thrusting mode, starts to use the um, Sapari thrust, but Koto no Waka, he grabbed an arm and basically uh, stepped a bit sideways, bit of a promenade, got uh, Takakesho facing the wrong way and... Uh, gave him a bit of a push out to finish the job. Uh, I would say that Tucker Kesho's Yokozuna rope, rope chase is all but over with his four losses. Uh, a little bit disappointing, a bit inconsistent this tournament. He was really looking for probably minimum 12 wins, more likely 13 uh, with a basho to pretty much seal up Yokozuna promotion. I think at this stage on day 11 with 11 wins and four losses and unlikely to win the... Oh, sorry, not 11 wins. If he makes 11 wins uh, after after the Basho and four losses, that's probably not going to be enough and it's certainly not going to be enough to win the uh, the Basho at this stage. Next up, Hawks, uh, Hokuto Fuji beats Asanayama. He gets a left... Uh, sorry, that was uh, Hoshoryu. Uh, I should say, not Hokuto Fuji, beat Asanayama. Uh, uh, Shoryu got a left outside grip and a right inside grip, and he just turned Asanayama over at the bales. A Shitatanage throw, pretty good there from uh, Hoshoryu. Uh, our next Sekiwake, Wakamoto Haru on day 11, well, he is in trouble. He just took too long to get a grip onto Kirishima, and Kirishima just walked him back as... Wakamoto Haru just stepped out in as he was uh, retreating. He's uh, only pushing out four wins at this stage of the tournament, and that is not going to get him Kachikoshi. Uh, he is very likely to get uh, Makekoshi losing record and probably drop down to Komasubi uh, after this tournament, which is very disappointing. It's one of the few Makekoshis he's had, if any, since he's come into the top division. So that leaves uh, Kirishima in the lead with Atami Fuji and Koto no Waka at nine wins after day 11. Uh, funnily enough, Atami Fuji, he's a, he's a funny, funny guy. He's uh, very humble, uh, always smiling. He, in one of the interviews, he said he doesn't like coffee. It's just too bitter. Uh, so when he goes to one of those uh, major coffee chains... Uh, in America, he likes a yuzu tea when he goes there, so good on him. Uh, Hakuho, Hakuho, the former great Yokozuna, he uh, said of uh, Takakesho's battle with uh, with uh, Kotonowaka, he said that the uh, basically the big pillow, as we call him, is a bit too soft and uh, Takakesho's thrust really had no effect on uh, Kotonowaka, um, I just think. Takakesha got a little bit overcommitted and let his arms do a little bit too far forward and uh, Kotonawaka saw that and grabbed them for the promenade out. Anyway, moving on to day 12 where we had tonight, Tamawashi gets his Kachikoshi over Oho in a pretty good thrusting battle uh, lower down the division. Uh, Oho's two, still two wins away from his Kachikoshi, so it was a Tsukidashi chest thrust out for Tamawashi. Hiradumi overpowered Churanumi to get his Kachikoshi. Tobizaru overpowered a... Th- uh, he was just got overpowered by a pretty vigorously thrusting Gonoyama. Uh, Nishiki Fuji gets in trouble because he had a bit of a double mata. Uh, got a little bit of a talking to. Uh, where are we? Takiyasu beat Ryuden. They got into a pretty good grip battle, but it ended with a an under-shoulder swing down by Takiyasu. So uh, Ryuden... Uh, loses out on that one. Uh, Ura and Shodai had a meet up tonight. So, uh, so we said Shodai. He's got plenty of crowd support. His home crowd there. Uh, Ura was trying to avoid making uh, Makekoshi. Uh, Shodai's lost the last two matches. 
Shodo went for a grip and Ura, of course, he went fairly low. Ura went backwards as Shodai goes forward. Ura takes his left arm and gave it a really big yank or a big pull. And Shodai goes down and whacks his knee as Ura jumps to avoid. But he stayed inside the Dohyo and he kind of landed a bit funny. Uh, he did get fully airborne, but he did stay inside the ring as he did that. Now, it was a pretty bad landing by Shodai. Looks like he's hurt his knee. It took him a long time to get up. The Yobadashi came to give him a hand uh, to help him up. Uh, and when he did get up, he limped off the ring and up the alleyway very slowly. Uh, Ura gets a Totari pullout win. Uh, Shodai looks like he's in a little bit of trouble, and I would not be surprised if he goes Kujo tomorrow uh, because he looks like he's done himself uh, a decent injury there. Abi beat Meisei, thrusting along. Meisei missed a, a Mawashi grip as Abi led him back and then sidestepped for a uh, Suki Atoshi. Um, Meisei just kind of got pulled into a trap there and uh, Abi just did his hanker, only he was doing it as he uh, was defending. So uh, pretty good win there by Abi. Hokuto Fuji versus Asanayama. Hokuto defended any grip from Asanayama. Asanayama just couldn't get a grip there. He got a bit upright with a grip under Asanayama's arm and then he just gets an arm pull as Asanayama was off balance enough for a Yorikiri push out. So a uh, good win there by Hokuto Fuji, who's had a pretty miserable tournament, really. Midori Fuji goes up against the human threshing machine, our Sekiwake Daesho. Midori Fuji just got a one-two thrust and he was basically sent into the realm. Uh, there was no real defense to that. He got a, Daesho just got a really good hit to Midori Fuji's chest. He went backwards. He kind of went down on his haunches, uh, down uh, with his bottom going towards the ground uh, and got a bit of an extra thrust, uh, a Suki Atoshi thrust down win. Midori Fuji did try to get his inside, his arms, and that big thrust just bounced him back uh, into a low position. Uh, but, excuse me, the good news is Midori Fuji got his Kachikoshi yesterday. Daesho now gets his Kachikoshi uh, on day 12, so he'd be happy about that. Kotonowaka came up against Kirishima. This is a big match. This is the... Uh, basically sorting out uh, our two leaders. Uh, bear in mind, Kotonowaka has said that he will change his name to his grandfather's uh, Shikona or Sumo name in 2024. I think he's only going to do that if and when he makes Ozeki. His name's going to be Kotozakura in 24, I think is the Shikona that Kotonowaka is going to adopt. Uh, his father is Kotonowaka, but his grandfather was Koto Zakura, and that's why you will see most likely a name change, I think, in January, or maybe when he gets, if and when he gets promoted. Uh, but either could happen. Kirishima, he got a just a really good right grip from the Tachiai. Kotonowaka got a bit of a grip, but it wasn't a great one. Uh, it was just a bit of a shallow, one-strand sort of grip. Kirishima's grip just allowed him to try a leg trip, but he stood Kotonowaka up and a Yorikiri push-out. That puts uh, Kirishima now on 10 wins with Atami Fuji. Uh, Atami Fuji getting his 10 wins up tonight, beating our Ozeki Hoshoryu. Hoshoryu off the touchy eye, he got an inside right body grip as Atami Fuji went backwards, but Atami Fuji trapped Hoshoryu's right arm and got a Kotonage throw at the bales. Hoshoryu got up and he knew he'd been caught at that stage. Uh, he had a wry smile on his face. He knew he'd gone basically tactically... I wouldn't say tricked, but he just got caught with his arm a little bit too deep and Atami Fuji caught it and used it against him and he knows it all too well. He'll be ruining that one for a little while, but that put uh, Atami Fuji on 10 wins with Kitashima. Our other match of the night, Ozeki Takakesho versus Sekiwake, struggling Sekiwake Wakamoto Haru on 4 and 7. Like I said, Wakamoto Haru is in trouble. He needed the rest of the tournament wins, uh, or he would be uh, Makekoshi starting tonight. Uh, he was working towards that. Wakamoto Haru got a good start, and he prevented any grip. Uh, there was a bit of thrusting as Takakesho went back, and then he sidesteps, bit of an arm pull. Wakamoto Haru missed entirely, uh, and then he got a quick push out, Oshidashi. 
Uh, look, really disappointing sumo from Wakamoto Hari. You could see in the slow mo, he was trying hard, and I think he just got a little bit too overcommitted, trying a little bit too hard, and that puts him in deep trouble. So, uh, at this moment, what have we got on the leaderboard? Well, we've got Kirishima and Atami Fuji on 10 and 2, closely followed by Sekiwake Kotonowaka on 9 and 3. Uh, our other nine and threes, I uh, don't think we have another nine and three. That leaves Kotonawaka on nine and three. We've got a few on eight and four. Takakesho, uh, Daesho is on eight and four. Our Midori Fuji is on eight and four. Uh, and Ryuden still on eight and four. Tamawashi doing well down the list at eight and four as well. So a little bit of a chasing group there. Uh, Hashoryu on eight and four, but... To be honest, Hishoryu should be doing much better than 8-4. and four. I think he'll be disappointed with that, uh, certainly tonight's effort. So going into day 13, our matchups in day 13 uh, should be a little bit interesting. They start pairing up uh, wrestlers in terms of who they think will be the best pair uh, and the closest in uh, wins. So Hishoryu and Takakosho both on... Whoops, both on eight wins, so they meet up as the last match tomorrow night. Kirishima and Daesho. Kirishima's on 10 and Daesho on eight, so uh, I would think that Kirishima should win that one. Uh, Asanayama and Wakamoto Haru. Well, look, I think the way Wakamoto Haru is fighting at the moment, Asanayama's more likely to win that. Ryuden and Kotonowaka. Look, this should be an interesting fight. Uh, nine and three versus eight and four. They've met three times. Kotonowaka has got a three and O loss record back to November last year. Ryuden hasn't done that, but I, I, I think Ryuden's got a chance tomorrow night in that match. He's he's wrestling really well. He's got some good tactics so far. Abi and Shona Numi. Uh, both uh, Arby's on five and seven. He needs to win every match from here to keep his Komasubi and Kachikoshi. But uh, given he's not very consistent this tournament, I don't see that happening. And Shonanumi running at seven and five. I don't think these guys have met before, so that should be an interesting meet up. Hokuto Fuji and Goniyama, uh, Anosho and Ura. Uh, Shodai versus Kimbozan. Kimbozan's having a pretty good tournament, seven and five. Again, Shodai, he's looking for as many wins as he can get to keep his Kachikoshi. Uh, Takiyasu will face Atami Fuji. So Takiyasu, our big bear, is currently on eight and four. Uh, last time they met in September, Atami Fuji got that one uh, by an Oshi Tayoshi. Uh, and so that should be a really interesting match. Big guys, I don't think Atami Fuji can rely on his bulk to push Takiyasu, who, Takiyasu out as he's also a very big man. So Hokseho will meet the chaos agent Tobizaru. Hokseho's on six and six. He's still looking for his Kachikoshi. Tobizaru needs to win each match from here. Uh, they haven't met this year at all, so that should be an interesting undertaking. Tobizaru won't take to being leaned on too well, I wouldn't have thought. Ichiya Mamoto. And Midori Fuji. Ichiya Mamoto is on 9 and 3. Midori Fuji on 8 and 4. Uh, these guys haven't met before. That will be interesting. Uh, skinny little leg pusher. Ichiya Mamoto versus our little pocket rocket Midori Fuji. I'm really interested to see how that fight goes. Uh, I wonder if Ichiya Mamoto has been watching those videos of how Midori Fuji goes about what he does and whether he can actually stop it because... Uh, most of the last few guys, they know it's coming, they see it, and they panic when he gets that uh, double underarm grip and they can't do anything about it. So that should be very interesting. Anyway, that's uh, there's a few other matches down the list. Endo and Nishiki Fuji. Nishiki Fuji is in deep, deep trouble at 4-8, and eight, and uh, Endo is not doing well at 4-8. Uh, and eight. There's a few of the guys who came up from Jurio that are more than likely to head straight back down as well. So look out for those matches tomorrow night. Uh, we've got... Uh, uh, a few more days left, three more days of bouts before the Sunday, before the Basho is decided. I'm still sticking with Kirishima at this point. I think he's got the goods at this point. Uh, but I tell you what, Atami Fuji is there and is likely to give him some trouble. Uh, having been in that fight off last time with uh, Takakesho, I don't think he feels the nerves as much as uh, everyone would think. Uh, so that should be an interesting uh, outcome either way. So hope you enjoy the sumo the last three days. I'll come back after the tournament is run on Sunday night. We might have a quick 
quick wrap up on Sunday night and then we'll do a full review later in the week uh, when I can get my thoughts and notes together and we'll go through uh, how everybody did for the tournament. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of those three days of bouts. Hakioi. See you then.